There we are. We are at Decoy Lakes. And uh, this might be the only bite I get today. No, actually, it's very rude of me to talk my mouth full, isn't it? Right then, we are at Decoy Lake today and I've drawn peg 12 on Elm, which is an M peg. And because the weather has been horrific and it's windy here at the best of times anyway, very open exposed here in the fens. Um, they're only pegging one bank so we can chuck to the far, far side. It's how they peg the feeder masters and things like that on here. It's actually really, really good. So um, yeah, quite fancy that in a way. Um, end peg, um, we'll see if they want to be out the window, if they want to be in the middle of the lake or want to be either end. So, uh, but got half a chance, so uh, we'll give it a go. Mm -mm -mm. I'm allowed caterpillars. Great big caterpillar. There we are. A bit misty. Is that better? Where's the camera on this? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Wiping the wrong bit. Here we are then on peg 12 on Elm. I am on an end peg. It's a fat tree they've just chopped down. So that's in the last few days. Um, so there might be a bit of rubbish down there. But uh, I know there's carp in here. I know there's barbel. I know some nice F1s. A lot of barbel. Two or three pegs up is where the barbel live. So um, a maggot feeder might come into play. Um, definitely some bomb and feed at work on this lake today with them pegging just with just one bank so um but um i'm gonna fish um well definitely down the side and then um i've got a short pole with start off with pellets and then long with maggots or pellets depending on how it's fishing and what species i'm catching really if it's obviously it's barbel and f1s then i'll, I'll stick to maggots if it's uh, more carp and f1s then uh, it'll be a pellet job um you're allowed bread up decoy lakes now as well so a bit of dobbing at the start might help as well um, bomb and bread as well can work so maggot feeder little method feeder um, bomb a um, bit of everything today a bit of a confusing peg really so uh, i'm going to duck and die for the first hour i'm sure until i know where the fish are but hopefully i can catch down that edge there about 11 meters there and then 14 meters it's a 14 and a half meter pole limit on this on this lake um, but yeah we've got 10 minutes before the start and um, i'm really looking forward to this we are off all the best. Wind's getting up. <laughs> and it's going to feed top kitten three with some pellets at the start. Untangle that float. Using wire stem floats all the way through today because it's so windy. And uh, we'll have a very quick dob down that side. And then we'll feed a few maggots, I think. Very quick dob. Well, might be a long dob. Depends how many fish are there. Seven mil punch. We're going for seven and eight. Down there. We look to try for a few down that side. Oh. This is the side of the tree first. And what's left of it? <laughs> There's a very good chance of some. Uh, some dib dab dobbers down there, especially now they've trimmed it back so you can actually get closer to it. We we'll start silly short and then we'll, I'm fully expecting sort of 11 to 14 meters to be the area, but I'll we'll have a little look down there, haven't you? You never know until you try it. I have got a long line above the float as well, purely because of how swirly that wind is. Even though I'm out the wind, the pole and everything's going to be buffeted a bit. <laughs> it's one tub blown in already. I clear it went in my keep net. It's quite coloured though, so it's not really dobbing, dobbing colour. But it's still worth a quick go. 
you never know. You're going to want £100 to win today, but you know, if I can catch £50 today, I'll be more than happy. Like I say, it's all relative in winter. <laughs> My best weight at this venue is £477. <laughs> that was in the UK champs. But that was a, a bit of a one-off, shall we say. And it was considerably warmer than this. But the, all this bankside clearing might have shoved them into the middle a bit more. You know, we've, they've basically destroyed their, their shelter and home. So there's every chance that they've uh, scarpered a bit now. Fishing 014 and a 16 down there, there's no point messing around. I'm not feeling this, this red dobbin, to be honest. I think I need to feed a bit of bait. Literally eight maggots. And about a dozen more. Line. It's about six foot there, and at 14 meters, it's, it's five and a half foot. Always goes up in the middle on the on most of these strip strip lake pegs, and on some of them, it's got a really pronounced sort of spine down the middle. Not so much on this lake, I don't think, but some of the lakes really go up. So the deepest water is actually down here, at three three or four meters. Fishing 012 and an 18, an 18 MXC1 and a 10 to 12 slick on this. So I'm, all my rigs are going to be on 012 and 014. 014 if I'm bagging, 012 if it's a bit harder and I'm struggling. But we'll quickly convert this to maggots if it doesn't work. Not seen anyone catch it. We had a frost a couple of days ago and. Uh, storm units and all sorts of stuff going off so uh, the fish have been uh, knocked for six a bit I think the water's really cold even though the temperature's gone up a little bit from yesterday probably take a bit more than that Ooh, yeah. probably take a bit more than that to wake these fish up that's a good sign some massive barbel in here two to six pound I'm on 10 to 12 slick, which I should be able to get everything in. I've got 12 to 14 behind me if, if it gets a bit silly and I need to pull them a bit more. I'm not on gear that I can pull them really, and I don't want to pull them, it's my first fish. Powerful <laughs> on pellet. <laughs> There we are. I wasn't the, the expected species. Great big barbel. I love them in here. Absolutely love them. <laughs> barbel. Love them. They do obviously eat pellets and corn and stuff on here. I saw someone have 99 pound of barbel all on corn on cedar once. But normally the best bait for them is maggots, without a doubt. So if we keep catching barbel, I'll start introducing a few maggots and certainly try it on the oak. That explains why it pulls so hard. Not like you can do for them. No matter what gear you've got on with them barbel, they just pull and pull and pull. Pink, uh, just a pinch of micros and a pinch of maggots already because I've had one barbel already I'm confident of catching another they don't tend to be solitary creatures I'm just going to tap those in there and then we're going to feed that 11 meter swim again Might be there want loads of maggots here you know i've got three pints for me today and they might want some bait but the last thing you want to do on this venue is, is pile in bait because they will just back off if they're not hungry so we'll start nice and cautiously take it from there and i'm 
deliberately held back from fishing 14 metres because I wasn't sure how bad this wind would be. And at the moment that's that's been a wise move. I imagine it's quite undercut down there. I know I've got quite a long lash but I can use this rig up and down the shelf and it will compensate for a bit of a blusteriness as well. We can shorten it a bit if we need to. So we've dripped maggots three or four times down there. If, if I don't catch there I'll come into the five foot swim. It's basically three and a half foot tight in and five foot a metre away where it seems to be quite flat. You start off in the shallower water I think you're less likely to foul up fish and more likely to hook a carp I think. But all the while I'm just I'm, I'm just letting this decide how I fish further out on the bomb or a maggot feeder or a little method or a bombing bread. At the moment I'm thinking a maggot feeder. I'm laying on probably three inches now. And uh, this rig's the same. Ooh, the carp just rolled in front of the next guy. Yeah. Oh, I had a bite. Oh, a rope just came on. Oh, the carp just rolled in the next. In the next guy's pack there. So uh, once we know there's a few roach, we can feed a bit more, a bit more aggressively. Still got a few micros in just to hold the fish. Learn that off their ship. <laughs> I'll go on this. What I've done, I've just chucked the maggot feeder once, just to put a few maggots there already. Um, and then literally let it empty and then reel straight in. So I've emptied the maggot feeder, come back, quick look on here and then I'll go on the maggot feeder. Just so it's primed. Ooh, got bug eyes that one. Bug eyed rope. Go on that maggot feeder. And that early barbel was a bit of a false dawn I think. Well, it's a maggot feeder, I don't have the lid on. So it empties really fast. I'm just give it a quick dunk to help them stay in on the tap. We can caught that a little bit. And just got it to where I wanted it. Just be mindful of savage bites if they barb about. <laughs> So I've got a 12 inch hook length, but I've also got like a 3 or 4 inch twizzle boom, so it's probably 14, 14 inch tail really, including the boom. Oh. That shot round. Absolutely shot round. Could have been liner. Notorious for getting liners on the feeder at this place. catching on this. That's sh absolutely shot round. But the fact we've had ropes there, we start burning a bit. We'll see how we got on this maggot feeder, but I'll, I'll, I'll swap to a bomb and pellet if it's not right. Or might even feed a separate swim with bomb and pellet. So it's our second chuck on the maggot feeder. It shot round first chuck. I'm very surprised the fish weren't on. Yeah, this is what I've got. I've got some without the lid and some with. Obviously the lid keeps them down. Next chuck I'm gonna to swap to that. Um, but it just helps get them, helps the maggots escape faster. But I've actually chopped the hinge so I can put them on or off. Oh, that's a big line or something. 
this this place they fish a lot they've had quite a few feeder qualifiers on here and it's and it's notorious for getting line bites i'm fishing a, an 015 fluorocarbon hook length on this i don't fish any lighter than that and fluorocarbon just helps it stay a bit stiffer and a and a few less tangles especially with double maggot i don't use fluorocarbon for much but i do for this game You don't miss them on an agate feeder. <laughs> well, I missed that first one, didn't I? Quite savage, so uh, I might have to just play them off the clutch a little bit as well. I've just got my favourite little nine foot, little nine foot bomb. Beautiful for this game, bends right through. It's only like a 30 metre. Stops chuck. Might be a barbel. Fully expecting to catch a few barbel on this. Yeah. Give it a barbel. Good night, your barbel day. I'm going to come off. We'll stick to double maggot for now. We can always try three as well. I'm going to keep it. Open. I'm going to feed a few more maggots as well. I just find dunking it helps them stick to that feeder a bit more. I'm probably chucking it four metres from the far bank. Go tight if we if we need to, but heard another fish roller. Couple of pegs up. Unfortunately, peg nine's not been drawn, which is one of the best pegs on the lake. So it will mean the pegs either side of that are going to potentially have an advantage as well. With that big gap in the middle of the lake, I've got the option of fishing um, an inline feeder as well, an inline maggot feeder. But I quite like fishing it normally. Again, I've done a bit of experimenting. I, I personally prefer the prefer it fish conventionally. Although I know a lot of people do like fishing an inline maggot feeder. Quite a quick cast, you know, as well. Three or four minute cast, that's all. Don't tend to leave it for much longer. Just fly a bit nicer with the lid on as well. <laughs> it comes back for the water nicer with the lid on. It's definitely worth trying that lid off. And I've got a bit of ground bait. I can always cap it with a bit of ground bait. So I'm gonna just cap it off. A bit of scent in there. Already gone a metre nearer as well, a metre more across. Good because I saw a fish in the next peg a little bit tighter across. And, uh, Because it is deep straight down anyway, so we'll we'll just we're sort of level with the pallets. Sort of level with the pallets now. We have a couple more casts on this. I've spoken to the guy next door. He's had one carp and a few little roach, and a forty the next angler up from him. Although there is a gap between them two, he's had one carp and a few little roach as well. It's not fishing well this lake at all. Um, so uh, my two barbel, I'm doing okay from what I can see. But I've just got another tiny little fish. So what we're going to do is just pop some bait in. So we'll put a few pellets in that time, rather than ground bait. Uh, 
that get to the bottom. Leave that alone for a bit. Clearly not on that line yet. Unfortunately, I think it'd be better if it was to take both banks. Well, you wouldn't want to be on that side today. But uh, my peg would have been much better if it was. So we'll see we get a bite here. I'm back in three and a half foot of water now. If this doesn't go, then we'll go out to 14, although them gusts are pretty bad. Hopefully they'll miss me down the side. So after a promising start with a, a barbel and a, and a barbel on the feeder, it's, I've gone from a, a promising start to nothing. I've just got to try and locate the fish. I should get a bite there pretty quick if there's some at there. I won't, I won't completely discount it, we might come back there later. But uh, it's not looking too promising at the moment, unless it goes under pretty soon. I've got a fish rolling to my right. Not so many in front of me. weird it absolutely shot round I was attached to a fish and then the next thing I know I was attached to a to the bottom and then uh, a big stick which fell off about four meters out <sighs> me and my sticks are you catching F1s okay. F1s catching a bream Right. Is he? Is he bagging? Right. Yeah, I can see Steve from here. He's fishing. He's fishing about 13 and a half metres on the join between his two coloured sections. Sounds like he's doing well, winning the lake. He did fancy it there, middle of the lake, with the pegs to his left not drawn. <laughs> been a few gaps today. Look at this. I definitely there's only one, two, three, four, five. There's only six anglers on the on the other lake as well. I took that really tight. Probably should have done that from the off, but you don't know, do you? Oh. Let's have a little rope. So we uh, got three minutes. Oh, the car park today, absolutely beautiful fish. That's a positive sign because that hasn't been in there long. But we had that on three maggots. <laughs> Maybe it is a marble. <laughs> Weird. They come in and then they, s they stay really down. Baggers, aren't they? <laughs> Bad, isn't it? Go 
again, that weren't in there long. Ooh, he's got a load of leeches on his mouth. And a bit of a growth. They clearly want to be tight across. Look, ugh, stuck to me now. Go away. Horrible things. Well, hopefully we found them. But if we are catching there well, it just means we can uh, attack our short lines a bit more as well. So we're all here practicing for the Winter League final, but you won't be able to do this in the Winter League final because it'll be both banks. We found them. <laughs> we have found them. I just wanted to be tight across after all that. Six barbel. Wind's naughty now. Ooh. So Right, we've got a catching zone there. So, forget that long pole line now. Maggot feeder, edge, and short. That's it. So all I need to do, just about go there. Yeah. yeah. Just had four in four drop. That wind is really bad now. It's actually turned a bit side more, a bit more side on. So it's just as well I am fishing this. Just about throw. Well, I've gone from nothing to uh, what have I got? Six barbel now? Seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six barbel. Bang, bang, bang. No bite that car. Keep making regular casts, so. I've only caught barbel. Have you? Yeah, I haven't had anything else. That means there's no carp there. I keep feeding that margin. I'm going to feed that 11 metre line quite heavy. I'm going to keep putting a few maggots in there. A few micros. And when we reel this in, we'll feed that. The pot's already filled. Just trying to maximise my time. Oh, Weren't looking. I was watching that guy walking up the back. We have a right old bag of whiskers here. Wait a little bit longer for that one, but I did chuck it quite so tight. The wind's really naughty. And the you know, maggot feeders don't cast that accurately because they haven't they're not as streamlined or as heavy as a little method feeder. So uh maggot feeders aren't the most accurate, especially in a bit of a wind like this. Might not be a bar with this. Might be an F1. It'd be nice if I caught a different species. Oh it's a barbel. <laughs> There's 
maggots don't look like they've been touched, so I'll leave them on. I was going to feed that pole, but we'll do it. We'll get this one out. And then we'll feed next to it. This one this one's on uh, three dead maggots. Oh, it's just went a bit slow, so I thought I'd just try, try, uh, just try a different hook bait option, really. Definitely another barbel. Lovely on this little rod. Well, that barbel took a little bit longer to come, so I'll just have a very, very quick look down the side, just to establish if there's anything there. And then we'll go back on uh, on the maggot feeder. But if I can catch carp, then uh, they're considerably bigger than the barbel. So uh, you know, it's all very well catching those barbel, but they don't weigh. You know, not when someone's catching carp. So it's just a very quick look. Doesn't look like there's anything there. Let's get back on that maggot feeder. I only popped two maggots on that time. So, uh, go back to three. The wind is cruel. I would not want to be sat on that far bank today. It's uh, definitely uh, a good decision by uh, Tony Evans, the match organiser. Big old roach. Not sure where the barbel have gone though. Just someone now where to start a new swim, but I don't know, that could have been a barbel. But the last couple of drops I've had silverfish. I've just chopped the hook off. So I'm fishing a slightly shorter hook length with a 16, a slightly bigger hook. And it's just whipped straight down. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but it's certainly not done any harm. Buggers, aren't they? Might be a bigger one this because it's not doing anything. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Biggest one. There's four pound mat. You'd have thought. I'm going to have that one on three dead maggots. Feeding lies, but they're just a bit waftier. Just keep mixing it up, that's the thing. Putting a few down that side as well. Not going to do any harm. What, we've got nine barbel now, eight or nine. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea in a commercial with these barbel, but they're absolutely thrive in this venue. And the fact that they've got to that size shows how happy they are in here. They've been here a long time in these strip lakes, especially um, elm and cedar. Anything else in here other than barbell? A little scrap of that one. Still fighting. Well, I've been throwing maggots there all day, so we might as well have a quick look. We'll know pretty quick if there is anything. I have attacked it a little bit more than perhaps I should, but I've got one eye on, on barbel, and obviously there's a lot of little roach about. Well, if I was going to win the match, and I needed to be able to catch down that side. So it's been disappointing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man went on. I've got to weigh up whether it's faster to catch them on this or uh, on the feeder. I'll just keep popping between the two. So we'll see how quickly it takes to get a bite, or not get a bite, and then we'll get back on that maggot feeder. It helps to give it a rest now and again. 
right through. As soon as I go back out on that maggot feeder, it will go straight round. Can't keep chucking it on their heads all the time. It's time of year, so give it a five, ten minute rest. Let them regroup. The wind's really swirling. I couldn't hold more than 11 metres if I tried. Not seen a fish roll or anything for the last two or three hours, and they were rolling to my right before then. And I've just gone quiet. I've tried a new, I've fed a new feeder swim to my left as well. And one little liner on that, nothing. Can't get a bite on my original feeder swim now, but I think everyone's chucking it now, and that's obviously slowed my peg down a bit. So disappointing on the pole today. I really thought I'd catch. I say if I'm going to win or frame, then that's where I need to catch. I think. Oh, them gusts are a bit naughty. Well, I've just gone at least 45 minutes without a bite. Not so much as a bite. I've chucked a new swim, nothing. So I've gone back to the original swim and it's ripped round. Big, big liner, nothing on. So it must have gone over a fish's back. But that's the only indication I've had for at least 45 minutes. All I've caught on a polar roach. But that was promising, because that's the first indication I've had for ages, going back to the original spot. See, that's a liner then. See, Roger's having a carper chuck there on, uh, on the cedar. Back. Like a bubble, as John Wilson might have said. Oh, he's in the flipper. Here he is. I think I'd rather get him in. Maybe because he's come off the feeder to my right, he's suddenly come back to me. It's no quiz, he's not fished the feeder for half an hour. And I've suddenly got a couple of bites again. Here comes the rain. Liners. Amazing, isn't it? I reckon for 50 minutes there was nothing there. And it feels like they're there again now. <laughs> you don't miss them once a year. Well, no more bites on the feeder, but I don't think it's a co coincidence that the guy on the next peg's chucking the feeder again. So when he chucks it, I seem to stop catching. So uh, I'm having a quick look on this short line. If it doesn't go now, I don't think it's going to. We'll have another look up, long up the edge, even though the wind has got up again. And then we'll uh, we'll just sit on that feeder the rest of the match, I think. Can't believe I had any carp or F1s. Just don't want to be here. Come on you mofo. He's at least four pound that one. I wonder he didn't want to come in. So wait a little bit for that one but it's gone again. Three maggots that time. Just about to think no, it's come back, go back to two, and it's went. Not sure if this is a barbel. 
keep saying that, don't I? Of course it's a barbel. Something else in here. <laughs> Seem a bit bigger on the pole. <laughs> this one's staying out. Dare I say this one isn't a barbel. Barbel Slayer. Right, I'll show you my real quick. 16 up. That's 015 fluorocarbon. Anything from 12 inch to 10 inch. And then I've got that much twizzled. You can see that. 3 or 4 inches twizzled. Then loop to loop. Hook length. Then above the twizzle, I've got two number 8 stops. And then the uh, maggot feeder just runs freely on that. And that is the medium 20 gram with and without the lid. But chucking it like that without the lid um, can be really good because you get a really fast escape. A little trick there. So, uh, yeah, that's on six pound um, Horizon Mono. And then my trusty 3000 Horizon is real and a, and a little, little nine foot bomb. Beautiful, lovely fishing. Well, the weather's even worse now than when we were fishing. Absolutely shocking, it's raining now. I don't know where the scales are. They're messing around up there, I don't know. But if I'm packed away, they're definitely dilly-dallying if I'm already packed away. But I've had, um, what have I had? Um, four barbel down the edge, one short, and ten to a dozen on the maggot feed along. What's that, 17 barbel? Something like that. So I don't know what they'll go. So I uh, hopefully got 50 pound of them, hopefully. I think Ford is caught in the middle of the lake and he's had a little run of fish late next to me as well. So we'll see, we'll see how we've done. But uh, it's been enjoyable anyway, I love catching those barbel. Well, there we are. I've uh, left the hat and uh, the Sherpa on for uh, continuity. <laughs> no, not really. I've been out in my garage uh, doing a bit of work and it's a bit nippy tonight. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, a week or so's passed since that match and um, there are more species in that lake than barbel, honestly. I can't believe that's all I caught. I, I what did I have? 17 or maybe 18 barbel. I hope they'd go 50 odd pound, but um, they went 45 pound. But the scales were really misbehaving. And um, if they had any sense, they chucked them in the bin afterwards because we all had a nightmare weighing in everybody. But um, yeah, so I thought I'd got 50 pound, but anyway, they weighed 45 pound. But that is definitely the case with those barbel. They look massive and. Um, you know, but they don't weigh, they don't weigh that well, really. And if you are on those barbel, you do need a lot of them to compete because the carp, they, the, the carp are really chunky and they do weigh, they're sort of at four to 10 pound a piece in that lake. And um, to win, like I knew I needed carp. It was nice catching those barbel, but you did need some carp. So, um, but I think, um, well, I got a section prize. It was only a small section because, uh, well, they were all small sections. There were so many gaps and no-shows and things. And um, the weather certainly put a lot of people off. So I got I got an envelope for the day. Um, and um, our lake actually fished quite hard on the day. Um, Steve Ford won it. Um, he's had £90. He's had five or six carp. He's had some F1s. He's had eight to ten bream. And he's had probably ten barbel as well. He's had a lovely mixed bag. All on the pole, about 12 metres. And he, yeah, he's fished really, really well. There's a load of space there, but he's also fished well. He's very good at that game, Steve is. And um, lo and behold, um, we fished the very same lake the next week um, because I drew Elm again on the Winter League final. 
Yeah, and um, I've had 26 kilos or 25 kilos, which is about 55, 60 pounds, something like that. Um, um, I, I'm not prepared to convert it at the moment, but yeah, it's something like that anyway. And I come fourth on the lake with that. And obviously there's a lot more anglers on the lake. There was 13 anglers on the lake. So I come fourth on the lake and Steve Ford again won the lake and he fished fantastic. He was diagonally opposite me. There was a guy opposite me and he was the next one along. Well, yeah, he was on, what was he on? About peg 17, I think. And he's paralyzed the lake. He's had 70, 75, 76, 77 kilos, something like that. So he's fished fantastic. Now there is a bit of a hole there. In fact, there's a really pronounced hole. It goes a foot deeper. And he's chucked into that hole all day. Windy as hell again. The wind absolutely ruined it. Um, but he's fished really, really well. I think he's fished corn on the bomb. Um, mostly, he's fished a bit of everything, but he's fished really well anyway. And he's, he's paralyzed um the, the the lake and he's come second in the whole winter league match and our team we came eighth out of i think it's 26 teams so uh so we didn't do too bad and i didn't do too bad and that those lessons learned on on elm on that end peg helped a little bit although i found i caught best on um on the bomb chucking into the middle and i had when the wind finally subsided i had five or six big carp um so i think i had four barbel five or six carp and a bream <laughs> for for 25 kilos so uh so yeah but anyway it was an interesting day um i hope you enjoyed watching that i love fishing a maggot feeder it's not very often you get to fish a maggot feeder and, and have a, such a nice day catching hard fighting barbel like that so it's really good fun um i think in it, they only just chopped those trees down um, within a day or two of me drawing there. And I think that had unsettled them a little bit. I think a few carp would have stayed under them if, 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 it, if it was like a week later rather than just two days later or whenever it was they did it all. Um, but also they, because there was no one on the far bank, I think they've just backed away. But there's very few carp caught on the day other than 40 catching. And I think there's one or two caught on our lake that day so um whereas there was a lot of carp caught and not so many barbel caught on the winter league final a week later so uh, anyway every day is a bit different as that shows i thoroughly enjoyed catching it catching those fish on the maggot feeder um certainly an interesting day and a little bit different to uh catching f1s or catching roach or bream or anything like that so yeah so uh i love the decoy lakes as well really nice venue so um it's well worth a visit if you've not been before and um it does get a bit windy there that was a particularly windy day um but when the fish are there you certainly have a decent day's fishing so as it proved so uh, anyway hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you on another video